Most traders who use Bollinger Bands struggle to break even. Today we are diving deep into this indicator and precisely we are going to use a derivative called percent %B, a tool that can transform your strategy from good to phenomenal. So stick around and I will teach you how to build a portfolio of robust strategies using percent %B indicator. So first let's get to know what percent %B actually is. Percent %B tells you where the current price sits in relation to the Bollinger Band. So here I have the chart of the S&P 500 index with the Bollinger Bands plotted on top of the price. So this is the top Bollinger Band and this is the bottom Bollinger Band. Now the Bollinger Band uses a moving average which is this line and adds a standard deviation to the top and deduct a standard deviation to get the bottom channel. Usually the moving average is 20 periods and the standard deviation is 2. To use Bollinger Band for breakout, you usually go long when the price breaks above the uh, upper channel and you go short when the price breaks below the lower channel. Now since we are trading the S&P 500 index and I mentioned this in many of my other videos, the S&P 500 index tends to drift up most of the time and also it works really well with mean reversion. So in that case, we need to use the Bollinger Bands in a different way, which is we are going to use it to go long when the price breaks below the lower channel. Now I mentioned this in almost all my videos, it is very important to reiterate, which is you need to match the strategy style to the instrument characteristics. Now this is what I teach in my Algo Trading Masterclass because it makes a lot of sense also it let you reach a robust strategy development much, much faster. In this case, we are trading the S&P 500 index, which tends to go up most of the time. Also, it works much better with mere version style than with breakout style. So using the Bollinger Bands to trade a mere version strategy long on the S&P 500 index will yield much better strategy than normal. Now, that doesn't mean you cannot build a short strategy or a breakout strategy on the S&P 500. It's just this methodology works much faster and produce much more robust strategies than other methodology. Now that we know how we are going to trade, let me explain percent %B. So instead of taking the close below the channel to go long, we are going to use percent %B. So percent %B, like I mentioned, calculate where the price sits in the channel. So in this case, I have the 20 day moving average with two standard deviation. Same thing. This is percent %B indicator. And you see how it measure the close in relation to the channel. So it starts from zero. So this is zero and this is one. When the price goes above the channel like this one, we see the price go above number one. And when the price go below the channel, like in here and in here, you see the price is below zero here and here. Now the advantage here is I can be very precise. So instead of saying when the close is above the channel, I can say when the percent %B is greater than 1.1 or greater than 1.2 or greater than 1.3. Same thing below the channel, I can say percent %B is smaller than zero or smaller than 0.1 or smaller than minus 0.2. And the difference here is minus 0.2 is somewhere maybe around here. But 0.1 is just above the lower channel. And if you are using the close, it's very hard to determine that. But with percent %B, we can easily do this optimization. So here is our first test. We will enter when the close is below the lower Bollinger Bands of 20 bar moving average and two standard deviation. Now, because we are using percent %B, so the entry is going to be like this. This is saying the same thing. Percent %B of 20 day and two standard deviation, when it's lower than zero, that means the price is lower than zero. So that's our entry condition. And we will exit when the close is greater or higher than the previous high. Now, that not necessarily means that we are profitable because we could be going down, 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 and then the close will be higher than the previous high. 
So it's just a faster way to exit when you are profitable. So here is an example of our trade. When the close below Bollinger Bands, which we are measuring using the percent V indicator. So you see when it goes below zero, we enter and we exit when the close above the previous high. So this is the close above the previous high we exit. We are entering on the same bar, exiting on the same bar. And here we have another trade. So again, here the close is below lower Bollinger Band, but we are using percent %V. So percent %V below zero, we enter same bar. And then we wait when the close is above the previous high. And that's why I told you it's not necessarily going to be profitable. For example, here, so we have uh, a losing trade, but it happens here we exit when the close is higher than the previous high. And this is the result of the strategy. We are making six to one return to drawdown ratio, 114,000 in total. And this is the, how the curve looks like. Very good. Trade analysis, 110 trades, 76% win rate and above $1,000 on average. This is already an amazing strategy. Let's look at the periodical return. Again, it's very, very well. And notice that I'm doing this in the end of uh, March in 2024, but we don't have any trades in 2024. And of course, we can see this clearly. So this is the chart and we see we, since November, 2023, we never <laughs> dipped below the lower channel of the Bollinger Band. And this value comes from the values in the Bollinger Band settings. Because we are looking at 20 day moving average and two standard deviation, we will have uh, fewer trades. We can easily increase the number of trades by either reducing the standard deviation or reducing the moving average or both. So we need to test to figure out. Also, remember now we are using percent %B below zero. We can use percent %B below 0 0.3. So that's why we're using percent %B because we can do these optimizations. And here are the results of the optimization of percent %B from minus 0.3 to 0.3. That means we have three values below 0, 0, and then three values above 0. And that's the advantage of using percent %B to trade instead of the Bollinger Bands itself because we can be very precise on where the price sits in relation to the channel. And obviously you can see the further away from zero, below zero I mean, we get fewer trades and the further in the channel we get more trades. So this is our original strategy at 110 and you see 0.3 making more than double the number of trades. Now that doesn't translate to more profits because you will have more losers than winners and you can see the win rate drops from 76 to 72. Also, our maximum drawdown uh, goes uh, from minus 19,000 to minus almost $31,000. Now, I'll do another optimization by changing also the moving average and the standard deviation. So now we have an optimization for the percent V, which is again from minus 0.3 to 0.3, but also I optimize the moving average of the Bollinger Bands and the standard deviation. So the moving average from five to 20 and the standard deviation from one to two and a half. And now you see that even with minus 0.2, we have above 300 trades because now we shorten the length of the moving average and we reduce the standard deviation, which gives us many more opportunities to have a trade. And let me show you how this looks like here. So if I change this to five and one, You see now when the channel is small, obviously we will have a lot more opportunities. And look at this is 2024 before we didn't have any trades and now we have many trades because it's easier to break the channel when it is a smaller width. Now I prefer this way than the starting strategy because here we have more trades. It's a lot easier to judge if the strategy is robust or not. You can always go back to the original strategy, but let's keep the number of trades high and let's introduce a new concept. So the new concept is instead of applying one level, which is let's say percent B, 
smaller than 0.2 minus 0.2 that's a fixed level now we will say if percent b lower than minus 0.2 for two times so that means the price here has to stay below 0.2 two bars in order for our signal to be true we can also define this it doesn't have to be consecutive two bars we can say look in the past number of bars to see if it is true so that means i can look in the past four bars and let me know if two of them are below minus 0.2 and we do this with the if statement and this is how the statement looks we are using count if percent b lower than minus 0.2 in the past four bars two times so if percent b lower than minus 0.2 twice in the last four bars that means the entry condition is true and we will enter in a position same thing as always we will exit when the close is higher than the previous high so here is an example of this trade so you can see this is percent b now and this is now adjusted for five bars moving average and one standard deviation just like the bollinger bands channel so now we are counting in the past four bars if two bars are below 0.2 and so we can see here the percent b is minus 0.46 and then the next bar percent b is minus 0.36 so now i have two bars below minus 0.2 in the past four bars so we enter the trade and we exit when the close is higher than the previous high here is another example percent b is minus 0.23 and here is minus 0.28 so we enter and again we exit when the close is higher than the previous high so this is the strategy performance we are making hundred twenty three thousand dollars 6.2 return to drawdown ratio we are 12.6 only in the market so if you annualize this this is a huge return on the investment and 163 trades so we're slightly ahead uh, last strategy was 110 trades and we are making 755 on average for annual period analysis we have no losing year now of course i can easily increase the number of trades by making this condition true but now we can increase the percent b so instead of minus we can use a positive number we will count if percent b lower than 0.3 that means we are slightly above the lower channel and we will count in the last three bars if two of them are below 0.3 and again the exit is the same close above the high and as you can see i have almost doubled the number of trades of course that comes with the price of reducing the average trade and finally the annual period analysis looks like this and this is our curve so now you can easily tell why percent b is much much better than the bollinger band indicator although it's a derivative of it but because of the precise price in relation to the channel we can easily define different strategies and we can easily find better strategies other than the binary below the channel or above the channel and also by reducing the standard deviation and the moving average of the bollinger bands we can increase the number of trades to reach a statistical number that makes judging the strategy a lot easier now comes the part of building a portfolio so instead of building a portfolio of a different values of the parameters that we have once you fix your strategy now the better way to build a portfolio is through filters so we can combine the strategy with different filters usually uh, direction and volatility and but you can pick any type of filters and you can build a portfolio of the same strategy but now their profile will be much different because of the filter you apply and let me show you so in portfolio builder i loaded five strategies they are the same strategy applied to the same instrument so this is the s p 500 futures daily sessions this is the same strategy is the percent b 
we are using these values count if percent b below three in the last three bars true for two bars and exit when the close is above the high that's it so it's the same strategy i'm only going to change different filters now i already picked the filters because i have now more than 700 filters it will take really really long time to show all the filters but what i picked is not the best filters instead i picked filters that behave differently so for example volume direction indicator time and so on and so forth in order to get less correlations and with these five strategies let me back test and show you so first of all this is the total which is seven hundred eighty six thousand dollars and now our return to drawdown is 10.2 remember it was 6.5 in previous single strategy and now because these are uncorrelated we are getting better return to drawdown ratio and now we have 1300 trades obviously this is a much better sample than the first strategy we did which was a hundred trades we have very good average trade about six hundred dollars and an excellent 76 percent win rate this is how the curves looks like and this is the annual period analysis and now we have nine trades in 2024 100% win rate <laughs> i always laugh at these because you know they are amusing when you are winning all the time and so far this year with nine trades we made uh, $31,000 but here is the kicker part so this is breakdown of the strategies only five strategies as you can see they are not the best i mean i have many strategies that made 200 and above thousand dollars so but, but for example this is 112 153 53 and so on and you can see uh, different trades and i picked these because of the correlation and here you can see why so if i pick weekly correlation look at this the correlation 0 0.28 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.5 this is the highest correlation here is 0.92 so this means what this means strategy number four and strategy number five they are highly correlated but even then they are not completely the same we have also here high correlation this is strategy three and strategy four but overall low correlation and this shows up of course here in my return to drawdown profile that's why i have a higher return to drawdown ratio the takeaway here you should start from matching the strategy style to the instrument this is paramount because it will be very easy for you to find robust profitable trading strategies and that's what i emphasis on in my algo trading masterclass also filters are much much better solution than optimizing the parameters of your indicator to learn more about bollinger bands watch this video and i will see you there